Good afternoon. Welcome to Mass at St. Michael the Archangel Parish. Our celebrant today is Father Branson. Today we celebrate the sixth Sunday in Ordinary Time. This Mass is being offered for the intentions of the people of St. Michael the Archangel Parish. For more information about our parish or volunteer activities, please head to our website at stmichaels77.org or see our bulletin. If you would like a copy of contributions that were made to the parish in 2022, please send an email request to secretary at stmichaels77.org. Contact information can be found in the bulletin. Knights of Columbus Fish Fry will start on Friday, February 24th. Please see the bulletin for Ash Wednesday schedule. Please note it is our custom not to leave Mass until the choir has finished singing. As we prepare for Mass, let us silence our cell phones and observe a moment of silence. I confess, oh my God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done, and what I have failed to do, through my fault, 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 through my
teach us that you abide in hearts that are just and true. Grant that we may be so fashioned by your grace as to become a dwelling pleasing to you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. reading from the book of Sirach. If you choose, you can keep the commandments. They will save you. If you trust in God, you, sh you, you too shall live. He has set before you fire and water. To whichever you choose, stretch forth your hand. Before man are life and death, good and evil. Whichever he chooses shall be given him. Immense is the wisdom of the Lord. He is mighty in power and all-seeing. The eyes of God are on those who fear him. He understands man's every deed. No one does he command to act unjustly. To none does he give license to sin. The word of the Lord. Bless. 
Blessed are they who follow the law of the Lord. Blessed are they who follow the law of the Lord. Blessed are they whose way is blameless, who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are they who observe his decrees, who seek him with all their heart. Blessed are they who follow the law of the Lord. You have commanded that your precepts be diligently kept. Oh, that I might be firm in the ways of keeping your statutes. Blessed are they who follow the law of the Lord. Be good to your servant that I may live and keep your words. Open my eyes, that I may consider the wonders of your law. Blessed are they who follow the law of the Lord. Instruct me, O Lord, in the way of your statutes that I may exactly observe them. Give them discernment that I may observe your law and keep it with all my heart. Blessed are they first letter of St. Paul's of the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, we speak a wisdom to those who are mature, not a wisdom of this age, nor of the rulers of this age who are passing away. Rather, we speak God's wisdom, mysterious, hidden, which God predetermined before the ages for our, for our glory in which none of the rulers of this age knew. For if they had known it, they would not have crucified the law, the Lord of glory. But as it is written, what eye has not seen, and ear has not heard, and what has not entered the human heart, what God has prepared for those who love him, this God has revealed to us through the Spirit, for the Spirit scrutinizes everything, even the depths of God. The Word of the Lord.
St. Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have come not to abolish the fulfill. Amen, I say to you, until heaven and earth pass away. Not the smallest letter or the smallest part of a letter will pass from the law until all things have taken place. Therefore, whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do so will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. Whoever obeys and teaches these commandments will be called greatest in the kingdom of heaven. I tell you, unless your righteousness surpasses that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. You've heard that it was said to your ancestors, you shall not kill, whoever kills will be liable to judgment. But I say to you, whoever is angry with his brother will be liable to judgment. And whoever says to his brother, Raka, will be answerable to the Sanhedrin. Whoever says, you fool, will be liable to fiery Gehenna. Therefore, you bring your gift to the altar, and there recall that your brother has anything against you. Leave your gift there at the altar. Go first and be reconciled with your brother, and then come and offer your gift. Settle with your opponent quickly while on the way to court. Otherwise, your opponent will hand you over to the judge. The judge will hand you over to the guard, and you'll be thrown into prison. Amen, I say to you, you will not be released until you have paid the last penny. You have heard that it was said, you shall not commit adultery. But I say to you, everyone who looks at a woman with lust has already committed adultery with her in his heart. If your right eye causes you to sin, tear it out and throw it away. It's better for you to lose one of your members than have your whole body thrown into Gehenna. If your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. It's better for you to lose one of your members than to have your whole body go into Gehenna. It was also said, whoever divorces his wife must give her a bill of divorce. But I say to you, whoever divorces his wife, unless the marriage is unlawful, Cause her to commit adultery. Whoever marries a divorced woman commits adultery. Again, you have heard that it was said to your ancestors, Do not take a false oath, but make good to the Lord all that you vow. But I say to you, do not swear at all, not by heaven, for it is God's throne, nor by the earth, for it is his footstool, nor by Jerusalem, for the city of the great king. Do not swear by your head, if you can't make a single hair white or black. Let your yes mean yes, and your no mean no. Anything more is from the evil one. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, part two. Or should I say, I number two. Um... I number two was a little bit different because it had a different lens, different type of lens. Um, I couldn't have the same kind of lenses because of the surgery previously in my right eye. But it took a little bit longer, about a minute longer, and it hurt a little bit more. I actually had to take ibuprofen when I got home. And I told the doctor, and she says, oh, you know how it is. Every part of your body has different nerve endings and you just never know what's gonna be there. Easy for you to say. You're on the other side causing the pain. But um, it was interesting because they make you fast for 12 hours. No water, no food, nothing. And uh, which is torture. And all they're going to do is give you a shot to make you less anxious. Well, I fell asleep on the gurney waiting for surgery. That's how anxious I was. You know, I didn't need that. But because of, this, because of the fasting, my sinuses dried up on my left side. And when that happens, I immediately get a sinus infection. So uh, I've been fighting that for the best part of the week, and I am winning. Uh, I am winning, so that's, I, I know how to do this now. But anyway, they, uh, she also, the next day, looked into the left eye to make sure everything had gone well with the surgery. But she did the one-week checkup on the right eye, and it's going well. Both of them are going well. They're still swelling. 
and then next week I have the one week with the left eye. But essentially, I can see you without glasses. It's kind of still bright, but I can see you. The bad part about it is reading. Um, thank God that the church in its infinite wisdom put large print books because I don't have cheaters yet because what I'm discovering is I think there's a different prescription at this point for reading and different into each eye. So, you know, you get cheaters, one of them's going to be fine, one's what. But essentially, everything's going as planned, and as they say, it's going to go. So, um, another month, and I'll be able to see what the prescription really is. But um, the left eye was a little blurry because of the swelling on the, the next day. But, like the lady told me that was in there, the tech, she said, we don't care about your prescription the day after surgery. We care about your pressure, and your pressure's fine. So it looks like everything went well. Um, it's funny, they tell you, don't bend over, don't lift 20 pounds, don't exercise for a week. And as the way I sneeze, I'm thinking, I could lose one of these lenses. <laughs> they don't tell you not to sneeze, you know? So anyway, all, all, in, all in all, it's very gone very well. It's gone very well, and I thank you for your prayers. Um, now we can switch to, thank you, Jesus, at this point. So keep going. Um, let me put these back on. Our gospel today, not only is it a little bit long, but it's also very dense. A lot of things going on in here when Jesus is talking. First off, he tells them, I have not come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have come to fulfill it. In other words, the Old Testament will endure to the end of time and beyond, just like the New Testament will. There were a lot of people in the early church that said, because we have the New Testament with Jesus Christ, we don't need the Old Testament. Well, that would be great. Throw out the Ten Commandments, why don't you? And then what happens? You can do anything you want. Moses was coming down the mountain with the Ten Commandments, and he looked at Aaron, his brother, and he says, I tried, man, I tried. He said, but he would not take away, thou shalt not commit adultery. Okay, think about that for a while. Please. Anyway, back to the story. So he's telling, no, the Old Testament is what the law and the prophets represent. That's the Old Testament. And so Jesus says, I come to fulfill it. And then he says something that, if you're old enough like me, you remember it saying this way. Not a jot or a tittle will be gone. A jot was the smallest letter. A tittle was the smallest part of a letter. So we translate it that way. In our English, what is the smallest letter? The small i. What is the smallest part of a letter? The dot above the i. And so those will not pass away. Because he says that the law is going to be the law forever. So when people start thinking about like Ted Turner, of CNN, formerly of CNN. He said, you know what? The Ten Commandments are obsolete. We need to get something else. And Jesus said they are going on forever, up until the end of time. So he was letting his disciples know, just because I'm teaching you some things, just because I say I'm the Messiah, doesn't mean the Old Testament, the old ways are going to go away. They're still going to be there. And he teaches that if you break a commandment, watch out. Then he goes down and he gets specific. He is, you have heard that it was said, you shall not kill. And whoever kills will be liable to judgment. But I say to you, whoever is angry with his brother will be liable to judgment. That is almost all of us. I don't know anybody that's not angry with somebody else. But then he says, and if you call, say to your brother, Raka, you'll be answered to the Sanhedrin. What does Raka mean? It means empty head, airhead. If you call your brother an airhead, the Sanhedrin had a rule, the governing body of the Jews had a rule that you would be punished. Can you imagine what would happen driving with what we say? Oh my gosh. But then he says, if you go and say, you fool, that's my big problem. I say, my, you fool when I'm driving. You'll be liable to fiery Gehenna. Well, where is Gehenna? Well, the original Gehenna was the Valley of Hinnom. It was a valley outside Jerusalem. 
and it's where all the garbage from the city was dumped and then was set on fire. And it was smoky, it was smelly. For the people, it was a horrible place. And once they set on fire, it continued to burn and burn and burn. So Jesus takes that image and says, Gehenna is another image of hell. So he says, you'll be liable to fire, you'll be liable to hell for calling someone a fool. Think of that. That should give us a cause for thought. And he says, if you bring your gift to the altar and you're mad at somebody or you're holding a grudge, I don't want to see it. Go and make peace before you bring your gift to the altar. He's telling them things that they don't understand and they don't think about. And the same thing with us. He always says, don't settle with your opponent before you go to court. Don't sue everybody in sight. Don't make it difficult. He says, make peace so that you don't get involved in the secular movements of the court system. If you make your peace, you'll be better off. Because he said, you will not be released until you pay the last penny. And then he goes into adultery. Essentially what that other part was, airhead and fool, was the fifth commandment. You shall not kill someone's reputation. You've heard them said, you shall not commit adultery. But I say to you, if you just look at someone with lust, in your mind, then you have committed adultery. Those of you old enough to remember Jimmy Carter got in trouble for that because he admitted to committing adultery in his mind. He was right. And then Jesus tells us how to stop sinning. If your right eye causes you to sin, tear it out. If your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. Does he really mean that? No. He's using what we call Semitic exaggeration. In the Middle East, if you want to make a point, you exaggerate. We do it over here. I've told you 15 million times. Stop it. So it's called exaggeration. It's getting the point across. What he's saying is, don't sin. Do whatever it takes not to sin. Most people today would have to throw up their cell phones and their computers to not sin. Because that's how easy it is to sin in the world today. And lust is a very big part of that. All kinds of other things. So he says, do that rather than go to hell. Don't go to hell. Do whatever it takes not to go to hell. A lot of people aren't thinking of this. A lot of people aren't. I've heard confessions from people that say, oh, Father, I'm in a confession in 40 years. And this is what I did in 40 years. And I'll ask them after they're finished. And there's a whole bunch of historical stuff. Did you receive communion during that time? Oh, every Sunday. Oh my gosh. And so they, just, they don't worry about getting into hell. One of the saints said, if you commit a mortal sin and go to sleep that night, you're falling asleep on the brink of hell. You might not wake up in, in this world. So we have to make sure that we focus our minds on doing everything not to sin. Doesn't matter whether the world says it's okay. Doesn't matter whether the Supreme Court says it's okay. Or the laws of the country say that. We know it's sin. We know we can't sin. If we sin, we're going to pay the punishment. And we have to remember that over and over again. Because that heresy that's going around that, oh, God won't send anybody to hell. Well, why is Jesus talking about it? Why is he talking about it? We have to do everything not to sin. And then whoever divorces his wife must give her a bill of divorce. Moses had a difficult job in the desert. The people were on his case all the time. They beat him over the head with their problems. And one of the problems was, Moses, my wife burned my dinner for the fifth time this week. I want to get rid of her and get a new one. And then another one come up and say something else about his wife. I want to get a new one. Moses finally just couldn't stand anymore and said, okay, fine. Write up a bill of divorce. This means write up the reason you're divorcing her, hand it to her, show her the door. And then it, you'll be divorced. But Jesus says, uh-uh, that's not the way it works. You're causing someone else to commit adultery by doing that. So we, the same thing we have today is divorce decrees. They spell out everything just like it did back then. Now, that was a Jewish religion. Only men could give a bill of divorce to their wives. In the Islamic religion, both sides can do it. If a man comes home and he finds his luggage sitting outside the front door, he's divorced. 
and then he has to see if he can work his way back in. So it goes different ways in different cultures. And he said, don't take a false oath. And we're not talking about four-letter words here when he says swear. We're saying things like, I swear by my mom's grave, and she's still alive. Stupid stuff. He said, don't swear by heaven, for it's God's throne, and you have no control over it, nor by the earth, for it's his footstool, it's not yours, nor by Jerusalem, for it belongs to the God. And then he says, don't swear by your head. Why does he say swear by your head? Because one of the Jewish things was, I swear by my head that this and this and this. That seems kind of dumb. And he says, you can't make your uh, single hair white or black. You know what he was alluding to there? I looked it up. They were dyeing their hair back then. We think it's a modern thing, but men and women have been dyeing their hair for millennia. They didn't want to look old. They didn't want gray hair. Um, so they were dyeing their hair and then putting their hand on it and saying, I swear my head. And what? You've got a lie up there. You've got the wrong color hair up there. That's not your color hair, so there's a, a buffer between you and your swearing. He said, don't say anything like that. Don't swear by anything. You know, just, if you want to mean yes, say yes. If you're going to mean no, no. Anything else is hypocrisy. So Jesus is giving us a bunch of little things here, but essentially what he's saying is this. Don't put the law of God below the law of man. When he says this raka and this fool, he wants a man-made law, wants a God-made law. Don't make man-made law above God's law. God's law comes first. And it's very tempting in our society and our culture today to do that. And we shouldn't. When was the last time you confessed to going over the speed limit in confession? Why? Why didn't you confess it? Is it because it's a man-made law and it's not covered by the Ten Commandments? And yes, it is. It's covered in any way. That's, another, that's a story. That's a class time for that. But we have to remember that God's law comes first. If we were concerned about others' well-being the way we're supposed to in God's law, we wouldn't speak. If we're concerned about others' well-being, we wouldn't do a lot of things we do this, that we think is getting a by the secular law. So Jesus is saying, put God's law first. Put the Ten Commandments first. They haven't been abolished. They're not obsolete. They're going to be in existence till the end of time. So make sure that you know them and you follow them. And there are books out there and there's things on the internet that help you break apart the Ten Commandments to see what is covered under them. Because we think that just there's this big, big statement and that's all it means. No, it's covered. There's some other things that are under it and it's always been taught. So when Jesus is giving all of this stuff, he's saying God's law first. God's law with regard to marriage. A, husband, a man shall leave his wife and family and join with his wife and they'll be one. And no one will divide them. That's God's law. But because we are hard of heart like in the day of Moses, we have divorces. And we have other things going on the same kind of way. So put God's law first before we look at human law. Don't be saying, well, it's okay with the courts. It's okay with the, the country. It's okay with the state. No. Is it okay with God? God bless you. I believe, I believe. God, God,
promises happiness to those who follow his law, seeking him with all their hearts. Let us pray to him now in that common bond of fidelity. For the church, revealing God's hidden wisdom and teaching us saving truths in her mysteries. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For renewed efforts to gain global peace and stability, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For the under unemployed and underemployed workers and those facing layoffs, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For parents, pastors, and teachers, handing on to our children the teachings of Christ and his church. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For the dead, who behold the things that no eye has seen and no ear has heard. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Heavenly Father, please help us to live according to your commandments and so become worthy of the blessings we seek in these prayers. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. In your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. For your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands have become our spiritual drink. Blessed Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May this oblation, O Lord, we pray, cleanse and renew us, and may become for those who do your will the source of eternal reward through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. And lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right to give you thanks, truly just to give you glory, Father most holy, through the one God living and true, existing before all ages and abiding for all eternity dwelling in unapproachable light. Yet you who alone are good, the source of life, have made all that is. Such my favorite creatures with blessings, and enjoy to many of them by the glory of your light. And so in your presence are countless hosts of angels who serve you day and night, and gazing upon the glory of your face, glorify you without ceasing. For then we too confess your name in exaltation, and we voice to every creature under heaven, as we acclaim. <laughs> Father most holy, for you are great. You have fashioned all your works in wisdom and in love. You form man in your own image and entrust the whole world to his care. So in serving you alone, the Creator, you might have dominion over all creatures. The disobedience, you had lost your friendship. You did not abandon him to the domain of death, but came in mercy to the aid of all. So that those who seek might find you. Time and again, you offer them covenants, and through the prophets taught them to look forward to salvation. And you so love the world, Father most holy that in the fullness of time you sent your only begotten Son to be our Savior, made incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He shared our human nature in all things but sin. To the poor, he proclaimed the good news of salvation. To prisoners' freedom, sorrowful of heart, joy. To accomplish your plan, he gave himself up to death. And rising from the dead, he destroyed death and restored life. We might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose again for us. He sent the Holy Spirit from you, Father, as the first fruits for those who believe. So bring to perfection his work in the world. He might sanctify creation to the full. Therefore, Lord, we pray, in the same Holy Spirit, graciously sanctify these offerings, that they may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, for the celebration of this great mystery, which he himself left us as an eternal covenant. When the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, Father most holy, Having loved his owner in the world, he loved them to the end. And while they were at supper, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, taking the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, he gave thanks and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. to the realm of the dead. We proclaim his resurrection and his ascension to your right hand. As we wait his coming in glory, we offer his body and blood the sacrifice acceptable to you, which brings salvation to the whole world. Look, O Lord, upon the sacrifice which you yourself have provided for your church, and grant your loving kindness to all to partake of this one bread and one chalice, that gathered in one body by the Holy Spirit, and may truly become a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your glory. Therefore, Lord, Remember now all for whom we offer this sacrifice, especially your servant Francis, our Pope, and Edward, our Bishop, and the whole order of bishops, all the clergy, those who take part in this offering, those gathered here before you, your entire people, and all who seek you with a sincere heart. Remember also those who have died in the peace of your Christ, and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. To all of us, your children, grant, O merciful Father, that we enter into heavenly inheritance, the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Joseph, her spouse with your apostles and saints in your kingdom. There the whole of creation, freed from the corruption of sin and death. May we glorify you through Christ our Lord, and bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, and by the help of your mercy, we be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, Lamb of God take away, take away the sins of the
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy to share with you. Only say the word, and my soul shall be
Good afternoon, everyone. It's good to be back with my friend here in Santan. I guess every time I come here, I bring the wind with me. <laughs> my name is Ayman Care for the new parishioner, for the visitor, for my friend. I come here once every year. I'd like to say a few words why I come here and the reason behind that. As you walked in, in the front of the church, you see this all this beautiful carving, religious articles such as crosses, nativity, statues, rosary. They carved from the olive wood in Bethlehem area by our Christian community who live and reside in the Holy Land. This workmanship carried out generation after generation by doing so and sell them to the tourists who pilgrim to visit the Holy Land. This is how we generate our income as a Christian and make our livelihood. We depend in tourist industry. Tourism is very important for us, but sadly, Bethlehem closed for almost two years because of the pandemic, and it's reopened, and a lot of people hesitate, and some people will start to visit us, which is great news. So I used to come here for you guys to buy these religious articles from us, to keep us working, to keep us employed, not exit us the Holy Land, because so many factors that drive us out of that part of the world as a Christian. And sadly, our population went from 22% to less than 2%. It's very important to give our presence, especially in Bethlehem area. I born and grew up there. So there is workmanship for at least 180 Christian artists out there. I brought a new item this year. Even if you don't buy, just come and check this fine art. They could make great community gift, wedding gift, Christmas gift, I'll be back next February. So thank you for your support. Father, thank you for having me. God bless you all. Thank you. You can just spend your income tax refund. That's a good thing to do. Let us pray. Having fed upon these heavenly delights, we pray, O Lord, we may always long for that food by which we truly live, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, this Mass is ended. Praise be to God. Saint Michael, the Archangel, and the Lord of God, may our protection against the wickedness of the sinners of God. May God be with you. Most sacred heart of Jesus. Most sacred heart of Jesus. Most sacred heart of Jesus. To you, O blessed Joseph. 